Welcome back to another video, Badgers. My name is Big Natsu, and we are here with my top 10 games of 2016. So these are only games that are released in 2016, obviously, and, you know, it's my opinion, it's my games, so if you have a different opinion, you have a different list, leave it down in the comments below, you know? But don't, you know, don't be rude, don't be arguing like, oh, you, your number one game sucks, I hate that game, it's bullcrap. Just relax. Chill. Frick. But anyways, coming in at number 10 is Stardew Valley. So uh, I haven't really got too much into this game, but I did watch a lot of live streams of it. And it's just, you know, it's one of those, like, you know, just sit back, relax. I mean, it can be tedious at times with, like, different, like, you know, seasons coming in. You have to make sure you make money in that. It does give you that kind of Minecraft feel somewhat of it. And, you know, I've always, I used to play Minecraft all the time, and I just got bored of it. A long time ago so now you know it's good to have like a somewhat alternative that has more of a story and a you know just a better atmosphere and looks a lot better as well number nine is Watch Dogs 2 so you know I didn't play this game personally but I watched a lot of videos of it after the disaster that was the first game it just seemed like it was a lot better I had a more colorful vibrant setting than the first game did being in Chicago and it was nice to see them fix the problems that were the first game and make a story that was a lot better with better characters and just an all-around better setting coming in at number eight is doom so I actually grew up playing a lot of the older games like that where you know like painkiller doom stuff like that where you would type in cheat codes for god mode and like extra gore like make it where the bodies don't disappear stuff like that so seeing a game go back to the roots and make a more arena style shooter with over the top gore and no reloading nothing like that and it was just a great sight to see I'm so glad that so many other people enjoyed it and so glad it made a lot of other people's top 10 lists as well number seven would have to be Battlefield 1. So I only played the beta of this game when it was coming out, but I never actually bought it when it came out. But a lot of fun playing the beta. It was a good time. I uh, I remember I just wanted and needed to make a video, but I was too busy playing Battlefield 1. I was like, crap, I need to get to work. But Battlefield 1, right? It looked good. It ran good. had a solid 60 FPS the entire time on V-Sync with maxed out settings. And it was just a great experience. And it really, you know, it really felt immersive even though that's not a good word. And if I wasn't so cheap, I would definitely be picking that game up to play some more. Coming in at number six would have to be Inside. So I didn't per play this game personally, but it's more of a story-driven game, and I watched Jacksepticeye play it when he first played through it, and it was a great game. It was very atmospheric. atmospheric. Told a strange story that you're just like, what? And then you got to more stuff, and you're like, what? And then you've figure out the que the answers to those questions, then you got a new thing, and you're just like, what? At a very weird ending, both of the endings, actually. And it just makes you really think about, like, what's really going on. Coming in at number five is a very unique choice of game, but I would have to choose Lost Castle. So this came out around August. I'm not sure if they had other releases earlier than that. But I bought it during a sale, and I was just, like, looking at it. I was like, huh, that looks really cool. I kind of like that style. So I picked it up, had no idea what it was. And it was really fun. I've clocked in quite a few hours into it. And I almost beat it. But I died at the final boss. So I'm still going to stick through and try to finish it out. But it's one of those roguelike games where you go. You get as far as you can. You die. You get collect souls. And then you spend them on upgrades. And then you start over. And you go through. And it's, um, it's just randomly generated every time. So you never know exactly what, what boss you're going to be fighting at the end. And you don't know exactly what layout of the rooms you're going to have to go through. And what weapons you'll find. So it's really fun. It's a great experience. And uh, I haven't played the co-op. But I bet it would be even more fun with friends. Number four would have to be The Last Guardian. So just like Inside, I did not play this myself. I watched it. It was a very emotional story with great physics, and the only problem would have to be the controls. If the controls were a lot better, and it, it would have been, like, you know, more polished. But, you know, Shadow of the Colossus in the previous game were the same way, but it would have been nice if they would have polished them up more and made it a better experience overall. But not letting the controls get in the way. The story and the bond between Trico and the boy was just what really made the story and the game amazing. Number three would have to be Uncharted 4. So another game that I did not personally play, but I watched the whole thing of it, and it was another great game. Some of the best graphics I've seen, obviously coming from Naughty Dog, and it makes me excited to see the DLC and also to hopefully play The Last of Us Part 2 myself. 
I personally really enjoy the combat of the game. I know a lot of people didn't enjoy the style or like, you know, the semi open world that I had in different areas. But I personally enjoyed that. I love the graphics and I love the story. To see how the Nathan Drake story concluded, it was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. And every game that Naughty Dog does is a masterpiece. Coming in at number two is the game that made me mad the most, which would have to be Dark Souls 3. So I actually bought this game not long after it came out for the full $60. I love the first two Dark Souls games from like watching other people play them and you know everything like that. And I knew they were hard and they'd be frustrating, but I really wanted to get into the world. I really wanted to play the game. So I was like, screw it. I'll buy the new one and I'll play it. And um, trust me, it took me like 15 times to get past the first boss because I was not used to the controls. I didn't know what to do. I was, it was just awkward to me with the different ways they had to fight. But I eventually got through it, and I actually got through about a halfway to three-fourths of the game before I just kind of gave up on it. I'm just like, you know what? Eh, I love the game to death. And I love to just get on once in a while and just go back and slaughter everyone. But, you know, the bosses that I have to fight and all the enemies, it's just kind of annoying to learn. But I probably will eventually one day go back to it and hopefully finish the game, even though it'll probably be the death of me. And my number one game of the year is the most stereotypical one that you've seen a million times. Some people hate it, some people love it. I personally really love it, and that would have to be Overwatch. Honestly, I think this is like the only game that I've actually tried to play daily in a long time. Usually I just, you know, play them for quite a while, get through most of it, and then just drop it. Like, I never even finished GTA 5. I watched the game when it came on 360. I watched the play through the whole campaign, so I knew what happened. It's not like I missed anything. But, you know, I just, I never even finished it myself. But, you know, Overwatch, I try to get on as much as I can. It usually isn't every day anymore because I have a bunch of other stuff to do lately. Everyone always complains that there's no story. Everyone always complains that, you know, it's just a, it's Team Fortress 2 ripoff. But, you know, I love the characters. The characters are a lot more interesting than Team Fortress was. You know, I played Team Fortress. I actually uninstalled it recently. You know, the story is, like, hidden, and they have the, the animated shorts, which I recommend that you go and watch. Just look up, you know the Overwatch animated shorts or whatever on YouTube, and you can watch them all. They're amazing, they're great, and, you know, they show little bits and pieces slowly over time, and they release new characters, and there's, like, little clues in the game on what the next character's gonna be. And I was like, oh, is it gonna be Sombra? And then they came out with Ana, and then they eventually came out with Sombra, all that kind of stuff. So it's really fun to, like, guess and see what's going on in the world and watch the shorts, which is really good animation, which really looks like it would be something from Pixar or Disney. And I hope that one day they release some kind of movie for it after they release all the shorts. But anyways, that was my top 10 games of 2016. You hate it, you love it, whatever. I'm hoping that all these games actually came out in 2016. I think they did. Um, I actually had a Witcher 3 on my list. I was like, wait, that came out a long time ago. That came out la the last year. What am I talking about? So let's hope that I didn't screw it up. But anyways, I'll be bad like that video. If you did, drop a like, get subscribed, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in another video. Have a good day, guys. Woo! quality content.